G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for the summary video of the ATV Skater Templar. This is going to be a summary video of the final build as well as my experiences of leveling this build in a solo self-found hardcore environment. I will note here that although the final build does use a specific set that will only be usable at level 94 and will require farming before you can equip it, you can level with the same playstyle that you finish with, though it is a fairly watered down version compared to the final result. I played this build to force myself to farm the skeleton key dungeons instead of just doing totems, which is what I usually do, as it's by far the best way to get loot for a fresh character. And in that sense, the character did complete that goal. I have a complete let's play of this character's leveling experience, where it was played without any help from any other characters until it had reached level 100, and farm the Vanquishers set over something like 70 runs of the Skeleton Key dungeons. I will link to both that Let's Play series, and also to Mystery Meets Build Guide, which I mostly followed to make this character. With that said though, let's get into the build summary. The first thing to discuss, I think, is the leveling process. Uh, as you can see the final character on the screen in front of you, I can say that this build is hardcore solo self-found viable. It was able to level from nothing and reach level 100, farm the Vanquishers set on its own, and otherwise completed the game. With that said, it did struggle a bit to get off the ground, having to use a component skill for the first 20 levels, but once I had Vyas Might and Kalidor's Tempest online, it was fairly smooth. The damage overall while leveling is acceptable, though it's nothing to write home about, and the build feels very squishy at times in spite of having pretty decent defensive devotions, and two very good defensive skills in Mirror of Ariocles and Ascension. The build's main defensive layer was basically kiting. With Vyas Might having a decent range, you can run back and forth between the two extremes of this range, keeping the enemies burning in the middle, effectively chasing you forever but never quite catching up. When this stops working though, for example if you get stunned, the build very quickly takes a lot of damage. This feeling of squishiness continues through the entire playthrough, and I remember saying several times that I can't believe the character isn't dead yet. The saving grace of this character for me was the Azrakar's Sands Legendary Amulet, which has a Rewind Fate Circuit Breaker on it. This thing easily saved the character a couple dozen times, including multiple times fighting the bosses of the Skeleton Key dungeons while I was farming the Vanquishers set. As for the damage of the build while leveling, it's kind of bad. Uh, right up until you get the Vanquishers set and put it on. This is mostly due to the two items which give you Vyas Might cooldown reduction. Both have 100% physical conversion to other damage types, being Fire and Lightning, meaning the on-hit damage of Vyas Might is pretty bad, and we're left with only the burning damage. It works, but it's not going to blow your mind. Where this build shines is in how fast it can complete the campaign. I said multiple times throughout this playthrough that I was pretty sure this was the fastest run of the city of Malmoth or whatever area that I've been doing. This build can move. Next up, let's take a look at the gear. The main part of this build is the Vanquishers set. This is a four-piece legendary set that provides bonuses to Vyas Might and Kalidor's Tempest. The two and three-piece bonuses are more or less irrelevant, it's a four-piece bonus that really shines. It adds range, skill points, and cooldown reduction to Vyas Might, and turns Kalidor's Tempest into a very effective support skill that reduces the target's damage and resistances when they are hit. None of the individual pieces of this set are particularly amazing, though the amulet does convert Kalidor's Tempest entirely over to fire. While I was farming this set, the only piece I actually used was the chest, and only because I didn't have anything better. This set is kind of meh until you've got the whole thing. Uh, for the weapon, I'm using the Mythical Warpfire. This weapon gives good fire damage stats, plus one to Arcanist skills, and the proc on it shreds enemy resistances. These are all things that this build likes. The offhand is Zarthuzalan's Archive, which converts Vyas Might entirely over to fire damage, and provides extra cooldown reduction to Vyas Might. Uh, my book in particular isn't very good, so I haven't found a replacement for this. Uh, this is basically the best one I got from five runs of Steps of Torment. The gloves are the mythical Wormbone handguards, which provide us with some nice offensive ability, good damage, and the Volcanic Worm's breath proc for more damage again. The boots 
are the mythical worm scale foot guards which we're using for the crowd control resistances and the defensive proc that protects us from bleeding and elemental damage. For the metal, the mythical volcanum provides another offensive proc and plus three to volcanic stride. Our belt is the mythical crimson lotus which is a crafted decent all-round belt with plus one to oathkeeper skills health, offensive abilities, fire and burning damage, and the 5% max poison and acid resist doesn't really hurt either. For our relic, we've taken Serenity for plus one to all skills and a very nice circuit breaker. On the pants, we have Kubacabra's Shorses, which are mostly there for the plus three to tectonic shift, which gives more cooldown reduction to Vyas Might, and these pants let us hard cap it. Uh, these pants took me about 12 kills to drop from Kubacabra. I'm very happy with them. Um, you could farm longer for a double rare, but I'm pretty much done with these. These are quite good. Uh, for our jewelry, we have the Mythical Combustion Band for the resistant shredding and damage proc, um, as well as just good all-round stats for us. We have the Mythical Menhiren for mostly the plus to skills and, and good all-round stats. The Earthquake proc is decent with the chance to stun as well. Next up, let's take a look at the skill points. So being a skater build, surprising absolutely nobody, we have maxed out Fire's Might and all of its nodes. We also have the Guardians of Empyrean for their resistance shred here. Uh, Divine Mandate is our exclusive skill. It's crit damage, fire damage, and a bit of slew resistance. It's not amazing, but it's the best option we have. Judgment is uh, basically a vacuum type skill. It sucks everything in towards you shreds their defensive ability so you crit more often and it just does a little bit of fire damage as well. Uh, Presence of Virtue is a buff for us. This first node we're taking for the offensive ability. The second node we're taking for the health and the health effects increase. Um, we have a lot of healing procs on this build so this increases them. And then Rebuke we just have one point for uh, basically a value point. Uh, resilience is also a one-point wonder. Uh, we have this just so as we have something that we can kind of control when we get the Giant's Blood proc. With Giant's Blood being on a 20 second skill recharge, we want to use the heal when we are low, and not the first time we get hit when we're still at 99% health. Ascension here, uh, this is a damage buff and also a defense buff all in one. 130 damage absorption is applied after all the reductions from your armor and resistances and such. Uh, so while it looks like a small number, it is actually quite significant. And 160% all damage is nothing to sneeze at either. Over on the Arcanist side, Iskandra's Elemental Exchange. Um, this is basically just one point in order to get us to Overload. Overload giving us 133 offensive ability and 25% Aether resistance. The burning damage from these two nodes is nice to have, but we're here for the offensive ability and the crit damage. Um, because you're an Arcanist, Mirror and uh, Maven Sphere are pretty much mandatory. So this is 100% damage absorption, basically immune to damage for 3 seconds. And Maven Sphere is 25% damage absorption and some energy leech and crowd control resistance on that one as well. Kalidor's Tempest is the second kind of major skill we use for damage. Um, the Vanquisher's set gives us resistance shred and also damage reduction on this skill. And then the Mutator is just burning damage. Um, in a focus here, so 27% Spirit is huge. Spirit for this build is damage and offensive ability again is damage. Offensive ability giving us more crit. Arcane Will is basically just here to be a uh, Celestial proccer. Having Healing Rain on this ensures that the Healing Rain proc will only trigger when we're actually below three quarters. It's not going to go off when we, uh, for example, walk over a patch of fire and take three hit points worth of damage. Uh, that ensures that it is not on cooldown when we actually need it. Uh, nullification, because again you're an Arcanist and this is just a really good ability to have. You can strip shields off of enemies, you can strip auras off of enemies, and it does reduce their elemental damage as well. One point in Fabric of Reality, uh, it's more of a value point more than anything. It's not massively important, but um, 
4% extra damage to Ethereals and Chthonics, and that Aether damage is partially converted to fire as well. So, that's the skills. Next up, quick summary of the devotions. A lot of this is just because I needed five blue points and there's nothing really super fancy about these constellations, so a lot of these I'm not going to mention. Uh, the major ones is Aetherfire, which is tied to Vyre's Might. Uh, because this proc doesn't have a cooldown, and because each little section of the Vyre's Might Trail of Fire counts as its own spell and hits independently, you can trigger a lot of these underneath a stationary boss, or anything that you can keep in a one spot and you can really stack up the damage. Next up is Dryad's Blessing. Because this is bound to Kalidor's Tempest, which has a cooldown um, timer on it, it now has 100% chance every time you use Kalidor's Tempest, and it's basically just a heal and a few other minor defensive benefits, but mostly it's there for the heal. Then over here we have Eldritch Fire. This is bound to Judgment. Basically, whenever you push Judgment, most of the time it's going to spread a chaos slash fire kind of pox amongst the targets and that will shred their fire resistances and slow them down. Um, this is just more damage for us so that's why we've taken that. The giant's blood proc over here on the behemoth this is a heal with a bunch of regen and even more regen and even more regen and more regen and health and, and more regen. This is a regen constellation with a heal proc on it. This is all defensive that's why we've taken it. And the last two up here is Healing Rain on the Tree of Life. Uh, this again is a healing proc. This one is bound to Arcane Will. So anytime I am below 75% health and I get hit, 50% chance that I get a heal and a bunch of regen. So that's what that is. And then we swapped out the... We used to have while we were leveling down here. We had Elemental Storm. Um, 32 reduced targets elemental resistance. That's now being covered by the set bonus, so we don't need this anymore. Um, so we've taken those points and a few extra ones from here and there, and we now have Light of Empyrean. So this proc is uh, more or less when we get hit, we strike back, do physical and fire damage, and there's a chance for knockdown and uh, reduced targets damage. So this is a nice defensive constellation as well. And so we basically have one, two damage procs, and the rest is all defensive. In terms of performance, I did try this character in a Shattered Realm 80, and it was not able to complete it. In the third chunk, I had to exit out when I ran into the Reaper of the Lost and a bunch of other stuff at the same time. However, in the first two chunks, it did kill Kaisan and it did kill Alexander. So this build probably can do 80, but I would limit it to 75. Um, to get the two skill points from the Shattered Realm, I did have to do a Shattered Realm 50 run and I did record it. So I'm going to show that here just as an example of the gameplay. I will speed it up and there will be timestamps below if you want to skip it. So here is Shattered Realm 50.
Alright, so conclusion. Is this a good build? I would say yes, it is. Especially if you like the playstyle, uh, this is a fairly good build and would make an excellent farming character. With a little more work put into it to get better rolls on gear, it could probably do Shattered Realm 80, and I'm happy to say right now it can do Shattered Realm 75, 76 with just whatever dropped, you know, the first piece of the set that you got, but you will have to pay attention. With that said though, I cannot recommend this build for a first character in Hardcore or on a fresh start. It would be fine for a second character if you didn't have to farm the Vanquishers set, if you've got it ready to go, or if you've got a softcore character. Um, this build died, in air quotes, several times while farming the Vanquishers set, and it was only saved by a random purple amulet that there's no way to target farm. Gargaball in particular was very, very rippy, and I think if he'd had more chances to kill me, if it had taken more than the four runs it did for me to get the item from him, this character would be dead. I got very lucky with that drop only taking four runs. If it had taken 20 or more, um, this character just would have died before it dropped. If you want to make a skater as a first hardcore character, I suggest trying the Shieldbreaker version of this, or the Fakewisher Warlord version, as they're going to be a bit tankier. So, overall, I would rate this build zoom zoom out of 10. And that'll be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.